To be honest with you, the smartest thing you can do with this thing is simply... Hello, let's talk about eyepieces, because the telescope you just bought apparently didn't suck just enough money out of your bank account, so you need to spend some more. But don't worry, for about $130 I have you covered. Now you probably recognize these two, a 10mm superglossal and 25mm superglossal. You probably got these two with your telescope. Or if you were really lucky, maybe you got 30mm with your telescope, such as GSO. Usually they give you one of these. But wait, maybe you're saying my telescope can handle only 0.965 inch eyepieces. In that case, my friend, you don't need an eyepiece, you need a new telescope. Throw them away and go and buy yourself some new nice telescope. Moving on, I know what you're thinking. You already have two eyepieces, why do you need 10 more? The truth of the matter is, you don't really need them. Of course, they are really nice to have for all kinds of situations, but let's first talk about what you can do with these two stock options. The 25mm actually it's pretty good, optically it's ok, the only problem is it's a bit of the outdated design, it has only 52 degrees of apparent field of view, we'll talk about degrees of view later on, and honestly for just about $40 you can do a lot lot better. The second one, the 10mm, also it's optically pretty good. The only problem with this one is it has very tight eye relief, so you really really need to put your eye very very close to the glass. So much so that your eyelashes will be probably touching the glass. It's not very comfortable, but if you're just getting started and you want to try your telescope on the planets and something like that, you will survive for a couple of weeks. Honestly, I used it maybe three times during the last one year that I've had my telescope. So you can pretty much forget about this one. To be honest with you, the smartest thing you can do with this thing is simply... Simply throw it away. Now this may come as a surprise, but looking at all of these eyepieces, most of the time at the telescope I can easily go for two hours using just two eyepieces. Nothing more. On this one, of course, the stock option, I don't use it at all these days anymore. But I'm not going to throw it away because every now and then it can be useful attaching my cell phone to it and taking a nice picture of the sun or the moon. The whole of the moon fits just nicely in this one. And it doesn't suffer from edge aberrations such as the white field, so it offers some really nice pictures with the cell phone. So I will be keeping this one. Okay, what we have left now is the eyepieces that fall into the category that I actually use quite a lot. This one is the second eyepiece that I ever bought. I must have bought it in the first week after buying my telescope and it was the best purchase I ever made. I call it the VIP of my eyepiece collection. And GSO has made a very smart move of attaching one of these directly with their telescope. Skywatcher in my book has a big minus for not including one of these as a stock option. Two reasons for that. First, it makes an excellent finder eyepiece. What does this mean? You may have noticed I don't even have the finder attached to my telescope anymore. Because I don't use it at all, right? What I do is I point the telescope in the right direction using my laser and my red dot finder, roughly speaking. Then I look directly to this one and usually the object that I need is directly into my field of view. I will be making a video in the future on how to find easily deep space objects using a 2 inch eyepiece, so you may want to subscribe if you are interested. Second reason is that big objects such as the Pleiades look absolutely amazing in this eyepiece. You can see all the seven sisters and all of their cousins in just one view. I mean just look at this simulated view in Stellarium. You can see really everything with this eyepiece. The second eyepiece I use a lot is this one. 15mm. It is the first eyepiece I ever bought and I love it so much that I bought the rest of the collection of red lines. Not really needed, but I just wanted to have it. Now, the way I typically use it, I find the object with the 32mm if it's a small object, then I switch it for the 15 one and I enjoy a really nice magnified view which maintains quite a lot of resolution and brightness. 
And that's it really. I mean, I can go easily for two hours hunting down 10 messier objects, just switching from the big one to the small one. Like 90% of the deep space objects will either look nicely into this one, like the Pleiades, the big Sagittarius cloud and things like that, or M13, the globular clusters, all of them look really, really nice in the 15 mm Okay, so this covers deep space objects really well. But we also have something called planetary eyepieces. To be very honest with you, I'm not really a planetary guy. I like to look at the planets for 5-10 minutes at a time, but I'm not one of those people who spends hours at a time looking at the planets. But when I do look at the planets, I use this one, a 6mm. In my telescope, it enlarges the view by 200. And of course, to help myself on those excellent nights where I can use it even for bigger magnification, I use this nice Barlow, it's a Celestron Omni 2 Barlow. You can find it for cheap at AliExpress. The best thing about this Barlow is you can unscrew the bottom. And again, I will be making a video about Barlow sometime in the future because they are quite a versatile tool that any astronomer should have. And if you attach this small piece to any kind of eyepiece that uh, can fit it, you achieve magnification only 1.5, not 2. It's quite a nice trick. What I also really like about the 15mm, it can fit the entire moon just right in the entire eyepiece. Here's an example of how this looks like. What you see here, just on this space, rounds up all the eyepieces that you will need to spend at least half a year, even a year, observing the sky and pretty much you will be covered for most objects. So where do you buy them and how much money you will need? As I promised, it will cost you about $130 for all of these, which is really not that much. First one goes by many names. It's a 2-inch eyepiece. You just need to make sure that your telescope has a focuser, which can accept 2-inch eyepieces. Some of the popular brands are like Orion Q70, or my favorite one is Angel Eyes 32mm from AliExpress, $45. Very cheap. These are called the red lines. Again, many brands sell them. My favorite one again is Angel Eyes because it's a little bit cheaper than SV Boney, but SV Boney is quite nice as well. So just look them up on the red lines. One of these will cost you about $33. And the bottle itself, it's called Celestron Omni 2X. It will cost you about $17, $18 and you can use it quite nicely with the 6mm to observe the planets under great magnification. Now it's time to talk about field of view. These eyepieces that you see here, they are considered wide fields, which is about 70 degrees of view. But you might be asking, what about all this other stuff that I have here on the left? Well, these are simply nice to have. Let's say I'm looking at something with this, with the 32mm, and I want to take a little bit a step back, see it from an even bigger field of view. I will simply switch to the 40mm one. It will allow me to view it further away. Maybe on the other hand, I want to take a little bit better view, not too much, just a little bit. Then I will switch it for the 26 mm. So it adds a little bit nice for versatility around the 32 mm. The same logic applies for the 15 mm, right? As I mentioned, I can fit the entire moon in the 15 mm. But let's say I want to have a look at the moon from even further away or maybe there is some space object that I want to, again, step back from this magnification. I will use the 20. Maybe I want to take it a little bit closer, I will switch to the 9. Again, it's nice to have some option. What is left here is a barrel of 3. It can be used for sometimes on those excellent nights where you can go as much as 600 magnification. So again, another nice to have. And finally, we have the zoom eyepiece. The zoom eyepiece allows you to go from 7mm all to 21mm. Very easily and you can really zoom in and out. The worst thing about the zoom is it has a very lousy field of view. It has only 40 degrees field of view at 21 millimeters and 56 degrees of view at 7 millimeters. 
Let me show you what it looks like in real life. This is what the moon looks like in the zoom at 20mm with its field of view and the 20mm red line. It just doesn't compare. So why do I have it at all? Well, for objects such as galaxies which are very hard to see, it is useful to focus on that object and get just the right magnification and just the right brightness because brightness falls as you magnify so you can see the most details you can possibly see. So if you want to check it out, SV Boning has I think three options, three different zooms. All of them are pretty okay for pretty good money, but I wouldn't really recommend it that you buy it right now when you're beginning to use your telescope. Maybe give it a few months and then see if it makes sense for you. As I mentioned, I will be keeping also the Super Postal for some cell phone images, so I'm not throwing this one away just yet. What I can also recommend is a nice adapter from 2 inch to 1.25 inch because the stock adapter is pretty lousy and this one has a compression ring so it allows for some better fine control of using these eyepieces. Now if you do some math maybe you will figure out that this entire collection cost me about $400 but I'm sure you have seen eyepieces where a single eyepiece can cost $200, $400, even $1,000. So what is going on here? Is there some scam or uh, is it really worth it the money? How is it possible that this eyepiece costs $50 and somebody else is selling uh, another one for $500? If you're a science nerd like me, you might want to check out the physics, theory, optics of eyepiece design and why some of them need to cost that much money because they are using a lot more glass link below they can also have a lot bigger fields of view like 80 even over 100 degrees for the others i will share just a couple of pointers generally speaking an eyepiece like this one 32 millimeter will have sharp stars around the center of the view but as you go towards the edges the stars will just become to get all kinds of shapes and sizes and they will no longer be nice points the reason for that is aberrations. An expensive eyepiece will use a lot more glass inside of it, all kinds of lenses and elements, and this will correct for any kind of inconsistencies. They will probably also use a more expensive glass to accomplish that. When using budget eyepieces, you simply need to use them right. It's like ordering pizza. When you order pizza, you don't care too much about the crust. The center is where the meat is. So when using a budget eyepiece like this one, just focus at the center and forget about the edges. They can do whatever they want. But of course, it will also largely depend on the telescope that you have. Telescopes which have lower f-ratios will suffer a lot more with eyepieces like this. To be honest, that's the primary reason why I went with a telescope that has an f6. At this point, I didn't want to invest hundreds of dollars into eyepieces. I just wanted to get under the sky, observe for a few years and then see where life takes me. Looking at this chart, you will see that for slower telescopes like f8, f10, f15, budget eyepieces are perfectly fine. For f6, I still see some problems around the edges, but it's not bothering me too much. If I ever do buy the 12 inch Dobsonian, which is f5, I will seriously consider spending $200 for a 30mm eyepiece. It should be really, really good. If you do have such a fast telescope and you're sure that you want to spend a lot of money, here are some suggestions that I've heard that are really, really good. I mean, last advice at the end of the day, as you will see, what you see on the sky it largely depends on the darkness of your sky, the current weather, and the aperture of your telescope and type of telescope. The eyepieces are really not that important, especially in the beginning. Go out there, spend a few months with a couple of these eyepieces that I recommended and see where it takes you. Only then you will realize what kind of eyepiece do you really need and if it's worth spending hundreds of dollars for it. Have a good night, great skies to you and talk to you next time in some of my future videos. Thank you.